All right, guys, quick disclaimer. The airsoft replica and or parts in this video are not real firearms and nothing shown works in real firearms either. So don't try it. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. And everything here is strictly for airsoft use. Again, these are airsoft use only. All right, let's get into it. Hey, what's up guys? Today, we are checking out the Solink Hollow and Non-Hollow and comparing the two to see if there's any benefit to using hollowed out gear sets from Solink. To test the difference, we're gonna measure the weight between both sets using my little jewelry scale. I'm gonna measure the response time using a Gate Titan ETU Advanced, because in the app, it records the average semi-auto and full-auto response in milliseconds so we can actually see if there's a difference we're also going to see if it makes any difference in the amount of amp draw using my amp draw meter and also using the titans app to compare apples to apples yes this is not very accurate and neither is the app but as long as we're using the same tool to measure the amps i think that that's validated because we'll at least see a, a difference between the two to run these gears we're going to use a, a T238 brushless motor, 39k RPM. So we should expect about 40 rounds a second, I think, on 11.1. Since these are 13 to 1 gear ratio, both sets. We're going to be putting them in this gearbox shell that I've already got prepped and ready. All I need to do is shim up the gears. Speaking of shimming, the way I'm going to shim this is I'm going to leave just enough free play that these will move freely on each gear and to each other. Shim them just far apart that they won't rub on each other to mitigate that variable of load as much as possible. And set the motor height, bevel the pinion the best I can so we can try to get as much of a measurement difference between the non-hollow and the hollow. And if you notice I don't have the bevel out, that's because the bevel gears on both sets are exactly the same, even by weight. So we're not putting this gearbox in the replica because all we care about is to see if there's a difference between the, the non-hollow and hollow gears. We're gonna be putting the motor in this grip and then we're just gonna bolt it up the gearbox, shoot semi a bunch of times and full auto a bunch of times, check the, the gate app and do a before and after results. So we'll be starting off with the non-hollow as our baseline. But first things first, let me show you the weight difference between the gears. Okay, so let's weigh the sector gear first starting with our baseline, the non-hollow. Okay, so we got 27.49 grams. I'm gonna round it up. So about 27.5. All right, non-hollow, let's see how much of a weight drop we get. So we had 29 and a half. Damn, that's uh, pretty significant. So that's about 8.09 gram drop from the baseline. Now what about the spur gear? Here's the baseline spur gear, non-hollow. Just throw that on there. We got 23.54. All right, let's see how much the non-hollow is. Interesting, it's almost the same weight as the sixth gear hollow. So that's a 4.37 gram difference. Now the bevel gears are exactly the same weight. I already measured them off camera and there's nothing to note there. And the same to tooth profile, so nothing's different with the bevel gear. So now that we know the weight of both sets on the sector and spur gear, I'm gonna go ahead and first short stroke both sector gears because with the 39K motor and these being 13 to one, I anticipate that this being about 40 rounds a second. So I'm gonna short stroke the sector gear roughly five teeth, and this is coming from experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then shim up the baseline spur and sector gear, and we can go to testing and see what kind of results we get with the baseline. And then we can move on to the hollow gear set. And before I short, start short stroking, if you're wondering how I know which teeth to take off, I'll leave a link down in the description below where I cover tab plate timing. That's a whole video in itself to cover. And if you want to get yourself one of these trays and you, you and you like what you see, I'll also leave a link down in the description below in case you want to get yourself one. So this is my manual end mill and this is what I use to short stroke my gears. 
Gonna get that started and get to shimming. One minute, 37 seconds later. Got the sector gears, both of them, all nice and short stroked. Did two teeth on the front and two, three teeth on the release. And I already got the baseline gears shimmed up very nicely. So we're good to get, go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw everything together and we can get to testing. Alrighty then. And before I close up the gearbox, just wanted to let you guys know that we're going to be using an M150 spring with these 13-1 gears while also being short stroke by five teeth. The only thing that's going to change when we go to the hollow gears is the sector and spur gear hollow. Since the bevel gear is exactly the same, I don't have to reshim it or do the motor height adjustment again. So we'll just leave that there. Once I get this together, the first thing we're going to check is the amp draw off of my meter. And go from there okay so we're using 11.1 lipo a gmb with the 30 to 60 c real quick disclaimer this meter is not super accurate however we're going to be using the same exact meter when we test the other gears so we're still comparing apples to apples regardless of how accurate this thing is so that being said we do 10 shots in semi and then do a couple bursts in full auto that way that gives the titan enough data to give us the information we need for the semi auto response time, amp draw, etc. Let's do 10 shots. Pretty damn good. It is very fast. Hey, okay. so before we move on to full auto, this is what we got 19.9 amps. That's pretty damn good with this combo. So let's put it on full auto. Damn. Okay, so I think uh, the Titan's got plenty of info, info now, so I'm, what I'm gonna do now is unplug it and plug it into my phone so I can show you guys what we came up with. All right, so let's see what we got. 36 rounds a second on full auto. That's the average, so we're gonna go off averages here. And 36 milliseconds on the trigger response. And just fun to see what the slowest and fastest was 147 fastest was 35 so i think the slowest ones was probably from before i did all these because this mosfet does have some rounds through it already anyway let's see yeah here's the other one so on semi-auto uh the it was getting on average of 36.1 amps okay and then on full auto 24.4 amps and for all those Electrical savvy guys, here's the other information because I'm sure you want to see this. And you can put down in the comments uh, what you guys think so far with the baseline gears. Put that out of the way. I'm gonna tear open the gearbox and put the hollow gears in and do the same tests. Okay, got those hollow gears put in. So now I'm gonna close up the gearbox and we can first see what kind of amperage draw we get from my handy dandy meter. All right, here we are again with the uh, hollowed gears. So we're gonna do a bunch of shots in semi. I decided not to do 10 shots because we really need to get a good average. So I'm just gonna spam it a whole bunch of times in semi until I feel like it's good enough. Uh, probably around 20, 30 shots. So anyways, let's get semi auto out of the way. I gotta get this pointed away from the light. Okay, let's see what we got. 20.7 amps. Whereas before with this meter, we got 19.9. So a 0.8 amp increase with these gears. That could be really anything. So that's, I'm going to say that's negligible. It's about the same. So let's go to the gay app and check out what the other stats say. Whoops, I almost forgot to do full auto. All right, let's do that. I don't need this here anymore. This was there for semi-auto. So let's do full auto. we're good <laughs> now let's check the app okay so i had to go up here and do the auto clear so that each session was different so this is what we got 37 rounds a second which before we were getting 36 so one round per second difference that's negligible 
at best, in my opinion. If we roll down to trigger response, we got 34 milliseconds, where the base got 36 milliseconds. So it's two milliseconds faster. You're not gonna freaking notice that. Um, again, still negligible. If we go to fastest, it's 34, slowest 35, yeah. And we scroll down to our semi-auto amp draw. Before we were getting 36.1, we're getting 34.2. So there is a little bit of amp drop. Two amps is, I would say, noticeable, maybe, in, in terms of how long your battery lasts, if you were to spam semi-auto all da damn day. And then full auto, barely any change. 24.1, whereas the base was 24.4, so... Here's the rest of the info you guys can take note of. So this is what we found. You can could, you could take the info and come up with your own conclusions if the hollow and non-hollow gear sets make a difference. In my opinion, I think it's a gimmick. I'm gonna go with the gimmick. Hate to say it, but honestly, why pay the extra money when you barely get any difference between the two gear sets? Yeah, they, they, they make your gears a little bit lighter, but as you can see, the telemetry differences between two is negligible in my opinion. You guys can draw your own conclusions, and if you guys learned something from this video and value the, the information that you just got, help me out by uh, hitting that subscribe and like button so this video and this channel can benefit from the algorithm. So with that out of the way, I'm going to sign off. You guys have a good one. I hope this helped you, and I'll catch you on the next one.